Good morning, my name is Julie and this morning we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer and what that means to us today. And so the Lord's Prayer is really important and um, quite often we'll say it in church um, each week and um, maybe at home even we'll say it with our families as well. And so we say it quite often but what does it mean to us uh, and why do we say it? Well, in the Bible, it talks about uh, Jesus with his disciples and his disciples have been with him for a long time. And they, they turned to Jesus and they'd seen him going and praying and being quiet with God the Father and seeing him praying in many different situations. And so they turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. And so this was the prayer that was given for us to learn of how to, to pray to God the Father. And of course, in Matthew chapter 6, where it's found, um, it's got the first bit and then the church itself has added on a little bit at the end, just to say this is really powerful and mighty and we really need to remember to pray it and why we're praying it and to say, yes, God, come and be with us in our lives today forever and so today i brought with me my lord's prayer in a bag um and in my bag let me see what i've got in here oh i have got my box it's actually my treasure box because you know when we explore god's word it's full of treasures for us to know and to understand and to open up and explore and so this morning we're going to explore the Lord's Prayer and what that means and why we say it. So the first line of the Lord's Prayer is Our Father. So it's Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Do you know, that's interesting because there's a really difficult word in there. And in my treasure box, I have something to help us. So in here, I have this, this word here, holy. Because whenever we say, um, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, it means that your name is holy. God's name is holy. You know, God is amazing. He is everywhere and he is here with me today and is with you at home with your families as well. He's in church. He's everywhere. And it's not amazing to have, but we must remember that he is holy. And we need to remember who we're praying to. We're praying to God who is a holy God. And we say, hallowed be your name. So we say, our Father who in heaven. Hallowed be your name. The next sentence is, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that wonderful that God's kingdom reigns not just here on earth, but it reigns, of course, in heaven. And so that's why I have this. This is my crown. And this is to remind us of God's kingdom. God's kingdom in heaven. His kingdom in heaven is coming down to be on earth. And so I also have in my treasure box a globe, this globe to help us to remember all of us here on earth. And my globe is blown up and here it is here. And to remember that we are really important part of God's world. And so we want to remember that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that wonderful? That God's kingdom comes from heaven, comes down and falls upon the earth and wants to teach us and have the authority of God on everything that we do. God's authority of heaven is coming down to fall and to reign on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. Isn't that just wonderful? 
I wonder what else is in my treasure box. In here, oh, I have this. It is a little piece of bread, a loaf of bread. Now, is anyone hungry? Well, it is nearly coming up to lunchtime. Well, it's not that kind of hungry that we're looking at here. It says in Lord's Prayer, give us today our daily bread. So it says, give us today our daily bread. Now, where does it say that? Do we have to eat as much bread as we can? Well, this bread that God is talking about in this prayer is our spiritual food. That God wants to us to have, be filled with not only food for us, for our bodies, but also food for our spiritual lives. To know God in our lives and to have fellowship with him and to pray to him. God is our sustainer and provider. We must trust God daily to provide what he knows we need. So we pray, give us today our daily bread. So let's quickly recap what we've learned so far. It says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. God is holy. And we need to remember that. We need to remember who we're praying to. We're praying to a holy God who loves us dearly. But the amazing thing is, we can call him Father. Our Father in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that wonderful that heaven comes down on earth and we want the authority of heaven in our lives, in everything that we do today. And give us today our daily bread. Feed us, Lord. Feed us and teach us and help us to know what to do in our lives and how to live our lives for you each day. So the next line says, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now, what could be in my box here that could help us remember this, that we must ask for forgiveness for our sins as we forgive those who sin against us? Well, in my treasure box, I have a cross and a heart. Because that helps us to remember that what Jesus did for us on the cross, he took away our sins so that we could be forgiven. And the heart reminds us of the heart of God who loves us no matter what. And he wants us to have the heart of God in our lives, that we will love other people no matter what they do to us or how they hurt us or how they say horrible things or think horrible things about us. But we need to learn to forgive them and we need to learn to live our lives for God, that we won't say those things, we won't sin, because sin are those things that aren't very nice and God doesn't like it. And he wants us to be holy and pure in our lives. And so that line says, forgive us our sins. So first of all, we must ask for forgiveness for the things that we do wrong. And then as we forgive those who sin against us. And that's a really difficult part because quite often it's very hard and difficult to forgive people who have done not very nice things to us. But God asks us and he'll help us to be able to forgive them in our lives too. Now the next, next line says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So it's lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. My goodness, how hard is it not to be doing things that we maybe should not be doing? Now, who or what helps us to, to, to not do bad things or helps, helps to lead us to do things that we know should be right? Well, in my treasure box here, I have a high-vis vest like this. Because there's people who help us 
There's people who help us all around us. And I have my helmet here. So who do you think those people are that help us? And especially this time who are helping us. All the doctors and nurses, all the care staff around that we have, all the people that are around us to help us and look after us, our teachers and our ministers, they are there to lead us and to guide us to not go the wrong direction. And so in this prayer, God is saying, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, to keep us safe, to keep us um right in what we do and what we say and how we lead our lives today and now finally the last line is our chance to affirm God in our lives for us to say yes Lord you are all powerful mighty and majestic may you reign forever and ever and so it is for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. We are saying that God's kingship is over the world. Do you remember? God's kingship is over the world. It's coming to be here for us. For us each day in our lives that God's kingship is over the whole world and it's not just for now it's forever and ever it's for everyone it's for you and you and you and it's for me it's for each and every one of us for God's kingdom to come and reign for in our lives. Now here's a question. Are you willing to accept it? Are you willing and able to say the Lord's Prayer with a heart open and receptive to God? If your answer is yes, then we can truly say the very last Amen at the end of the Lord's Prayer. The Amen means, so be it, let it be. Amen. I really mean it. That's what the Amen means. It's a sort of saying that I promise to do all the things that I have prayed in this prayer, and I really mean it. Let it be so. Amen. You know, the Lord's Prayer is amazing to think about that we've been given it's rich and it's full of things that we can remember and explore for ourselves and understand what it means for us today in our lives the lord's prayer is a prayer that challenges us to think about how we pray and why we pray it begins by affirming god's kingship over us teaches us to let god take an active part in our lives instructs us to seek out learning and fellowship with each other, asks us to repent and seek forgiveness and to follow the example of Jesus to forgive others, guides and guards us to stay away from temptations and evil, and finally celebrates God's lordship over everything, forever. So an act, so in an act of prayerful reflection, we're going to pray together. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and really think as I speak each line of the Lord's Prayer. Visualise it in your, in your mind of all the little things that I've taken out of my treasure box and what it means to you and your family and your friends and those that you love. And as we pray this, may you really know this in your own lives, that God is there for you always, no matter what's going on in the world, he is there. So let's pray together and I will say each line in turn and give you something to think about. So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Imagine God in heaven. 
Hallowed be your name. Imagine a holy God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Imagine heaven on earth. Give us today our daily bread. Think of how God feeds us, not just physically, and but spiritually. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Think of the people we need to forgive and ask for forgiveness. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ask for God's help. He's waiting. Just ask. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Thank God for being with you. And we can all say, Amen.